Energy. Starring Gail Storm and Charles Farrell. Brought to you by Scott Paper Company. You can wrap more in cut-right wax paper because you get 125 feet in all. Protect your leftovers with extra heavy cut-right. Get the big 125-foot roll of cut-right wax paper. Now, Dad, you've just got to tell me. Nope, I can't tell you now, honey, but I'll give you a little hint. It's something we've both thought about for a long time. I've got it. You finally popped the question to Roberta and you're going to be married. Oh, that's wonderful, Dad. Now, Margie, stop jumping to conclusions. I am not answering any more questions. You'll just have to wait until I spring the big surprise. Vernon Albright, you're a cruel man. Anyone who'd arouse a woman's curiosity like this would lock her in a room with 50 hats and no mirror. Cheer up. You won't have to suffer very long. Bye. Morning, Margie. What mischief is dancing in those bright little eyes this a.m.? Roberta, just answer me one question. After today, should I call you Roberta or must I call you Mama? Mama? <laughs> Come on, Roberta, you can tell me when are you and Dad going to get married? Well, at the rate your father's going now, he should buy the engagement ring with his first Social Security check. And that pinpoints at about 1985. You mean Dad hasn't said anything about getting married? Oh, he's mentioned it in passing, only I haven't been able to intercept any of the passes. What? Well, he said something was going to change our whole way of living, and I thought he meant marrying you. Roberta, I just had a sickening thought. How sickening was it? The most. There's only one reason for Dad acting like this. I've seen the symptoms before. He's involved with some other woman. What are you so happy about this morning? Oh, that's what Margie wanted to know. I promised her some exciting news, and I'm going to make good. Now tell me what that is, and tell me what the date is. Well, that's your contract with Honeywell and Todd. The date's the 18th. What's so exciting about that? Number one, my contract with you expires in exactly one week. Number two, you promised me that when I renew the contract, that you'd step down and appoint me president of the firm. Now, see here, boy, you're not going to hold me to a promise I made when I was dead drunk. Nonsense. You never took more than two drinks in any one day in your life, and you know it. I must have been under the influence of something to make a wild promise like that. Now, don't try to weasel out of it, or I'll accept that partnership from Conway and Staub. They want me, even if you don't. And I can take a lot of business along with me. Now, don't get excited, boy. Of course I'm going to keep my word. You mean you'll, you'll step down and, and appoint me president of the firm? Uh, let's say I give you a sporting chance to win my job in fair man-to-man -man competition. I have here the papers relevant to the Mendoza account. You're familiar with it, of course. I ought to be. I handled several deals for the late Senor Mendoza when he had the consulate here in New York. Why, what's that got to do with it? Mendoza's widow arrives tomorrow from South America to discuss a contract. You fancy yourself as a ladies' man, so the dice are already loaded in your favor. Oh, I get it. You mean that you and I are going to compete for the widow Mendoza's account. Is that it? Exactly. If you sign her, you become president. But if you fail and I sign her, then you agree to another five-year contract as vice president at the same salary. Unless you're afraid to gamble your future on your own ability. Are you kidding? I've never even met Mendoza's widow. But you haven't got a chance if you play fair. Play fair? You say that to the man they call Honest George Honeywell? Just be sure and stay that way, and I'll mambo home with the Mendoza deal. And that reminds me... Where are you going? To a dance studio and take a refresher course in the mambo, the samba, and the tango. The president of a successful firm leaves nothing to chance. <laughs> oh, and that reminds me. Promise me that you won't breathe a word of this to Margie. Don't be silly, boy. The last thing I'd ever mention to Margie is a client. Good. Because if Margie knew the presidency of dear old Honeywell and Todd was riding on this deal, she'd try to help me, and that would be fatal. Well, so long, ex-prez. Betty? Yes? Get me Margie Albright on the phone. <laughs> Uh, 
Hello. Well, hello, Mr. Honeywell. Why, of course, I always have time to talk about Dad. Is anything wrong? I'm afraid there is, Margie. But first, give me your solemn word that you won't mention this conversation to your father. Good, good. Now tell me, Margie, has he been acting strangely lately? You know, as though we were hiding something from you. Yes, yes, he has. He was very mysterious this morning. What's it all about, Mr. Honeywell? Brace yourself, my dear. I'm afraid your father is involved with a woman. I knew it. I just knew it. Who is she? All I know is she's a South American, an adventurous. Just the type to attract a man like your father, especially when he's at that dangerous age. But I know you won't stand idly by and see him squander his future and yours on some glamorous fortune hunter. Don't worry, Mr. Honeywell. No scheming little glamour gal is going to latch onto Dad while I can do anything to prevent it. Good girl, Margie. I knew I could count on you. Remember, your father's future is in your hands. Goodbye. Ah, Honeywell, when you die, this brain must go to science. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Albright. Our classes are booked weeks ahead. Oh, but can't you recommend someone who will give me private lessons? Money is no object. A few of my girls left to dance professionally. One of them might give you instruction. Ah, yes. Here is Pepita. She is dancing in a burlesque show at the moment. <laughs> More money than I could pay her. Oh, well, as long as she's a good teacher. Pepita is one of the best. I'll have her call you right away, Mr. Albright. Oh, good. You better tell her that we'll have to have the lessons at her place. I wish to keep this confidential. Muy bien, Senor Albright. Now, Margie, you're not going to drag me into this. If your father and some Latin glamour puss are making beautiful chili together, that's your problem, not mine. But it is your problem, Roberta. You're fond of Dad, aren't you? Yes, in a distant sort of a way. The distance was his idea, of course. You know he really wants to marry you when he's in his right mind. Maybe it's the other way around. It's too that Dad's at that dangerous age. You're not going to let some cheap little adventurous get him away from you, are you? You can be just as glamorous as she can. Glamorous? Little old me? Certainly. You've got what it takes. Yeah, but I've had it so long. <laughs> Stop underselling yourself. Real beauty is mature beauty. Age gives a richness, a, a depth, a quality. You make me feel like an old Stradivarius. <laughs> well, all I'm trying to tell you is that right here is all the glamour Dad could ever want, if you'll just help him to see it. Well, if Pops is up for grabs, I might just as well give it a go. <laughs> what do you want me to do that it's not ten years too late for? I want you to break out your yummiest evening gown. And tonight, when Dad comes home from the office, he'll find soft lights, soft music, and you. That I can guarantee. Well, Margie Albright of the Cotton Arms, New York City, you asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you, Bernie? I hope you didn't have a hard day at the office, because this is going to be quite an evening. Roberta, what are you doing here? I mean, uh, uh, what's the idea? Why, darling, I thought you might have some of your own. <laughs> well, where's Margie? She's out for the evening. She asked me to make you feel at home. <laughs> home was never like this. Sweet of you to notice. Champagne, darling? Cigarette? Well, so much for small talk. <laughs> Whoever it is, I hate you. It's a woman for you, you cad. Uh, uh, hello? Senor Albright, this is Pepita. Senor Hernando said you wanted me to give you mambo lessons privately. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. Uh, uh, when can I see you? I have a couple of hours between shows. Could you pick me up at the Gaiety Theatre? Swell. Oh, and we'll have to find some place for you to take your lessons. My place is too small. Oh, I'll make all the arrangements. I'll be right over. Oh, well, Roberta, this has been wonderful. We, we must do it again sometime. Well, goodbye now. <laughs> Thank you. 
Anybody want to buy an old Stradivarius? Was that the other woman on the phone? It wasn't a time signal. Well, we've got to follow him and find out what he's up to. What he's up to? Are you kidding? Come on. Peter, the Latin bombshell. I hope she falls off the runway and breaks her neck. Shh, here they come. <laughs> I couldn't see her face, could you? Poor Dad. A stage door Johnny at his age. And a burlesque queen at that. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry to have to bring you up to my office for these lessons, Pepita, but I don't want my daughter to find out about my client. I understand. But what do we do for music? Oh, we'll get some on the radio in my office. Come <laughs> get it. Bring her here to his office. She probably wants to look at his checkbook before she makes the kill. Poor dad. Hey, maybe we can see what's going on from the fire escape. Come on. Hurry! I can't seem to find a mambo. Let's start with a tango and work up to it. Uh, turn off the radio. We'll do it by the numbers first, the way they do at Hernando. <laughs> All right. I'll lead. Follow me. One and two and three and four and... Wow, Dad Sacraliac is really getting a workout. What is she, a dancer or a wrestler? <laughs> One and two and three and four and. <laughs> now you try it. All right. One and two and three and four and. <laughs> No, now Dad's got a case of the bends. When I tried that, all he did was answer the phone. Come on, Margie, I've seen enough. Uh, da, 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 da. So that's the mob, eh? Sounds like the love call of a sick moose. <laughs> we finished up with it last night after I mastered the samba and the tango. That Pepita's a swell teacher. The vice president of Honeywell and Todd taking lessons from a burlesque queen. Brother, now I've seen everything. Not quite everything. There's that deal I'm going to sign up with Mrs. Mendoza to look at yet, and my name on your office door. You haven't signed her yet, my boy. She's due in town today, and I will. So get ready to go into mothballs. Now, I've got to go to the bank, and I'll be back in a couple of hours. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. I was looking for Mr. Albright. I have a message from Mrs. Mendoza. Mrs. Mendoza? From South America? Yes, she just arrived and is staying at the Park Plaza. She's waiting for Mr. Albright to call. Thanks, Betty. I'll take care of it. And so we followed them to the office and spied on them from the fire escape, and oh, it was awful. It's hard to believe your poor father has fallen into the clutches of such a woman. What does she look like? But we never did get a good look at her. Good. Uh, I mean, good thing I have a plan to save your father from this adventuress. You have, Mr. Honeywell? Yes, my dear, I have. This burlesque creature's real name is Mendoza. She's a widow, or says she is, probably just a cover-up. Well, then you've been investigating. Yes, I have a very special interest in what your father does. This Mendoza woman is stopping at the Park Plaza Hotel. You know, putting on a big front just for your poor father. The shameless creature. She'll probably try to stick Dad with a hotel bill. It's up to you, Margie. Nothing but desperate measures will save him now. Well, what do you want me to do? Go see this Mrs. Mendoza. But don't tell her you're his daughter, of course. She might suspect a trick. Tell her the man she knows as Vernon Albright is an imposter. Imposter? Say he's a man who preys on unsuspecting women. Build it up big. Scare her off. Tell her the real Vernon Albright is out of town. If she doubts you, have her call me and I'll verify it. Now, let's see. What's a woman like that afraid of most? The police. 
Mr. Honeywell, I'm going to join the force. Unofficially, that is. I'll fix it so Mrs. Mendoza will never want to see Dad again. That's exactly what I have in mind. <laughs> Mrs. Mendoza, I'm Sergeant Dooley of the Bunko Squad. Come in. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Sit down, please. Do you know a man who calls himself Vernon Albright? See, si, Mr. Albright is with the firm of Honeywell and Todd, the, uh, how you say, vice president. That's what he tells all the girls. Well, looks like Fancy Dan's got another victim, eh, Bubbles? Yeah, wouldn't it steam you? Looks like there ain't a stripper in the biz that's safe from that phony. You mean, uh, Senor Albright, he is not Senor Albright. The real Vernon Albright is out of town. I checked, and I traced this imposter down to you, ma'am. That's the truth, ma'am. He's trying to fleece you, ma'am. Just like he did Bubbles, the blonde blockbuster in Frisco. This man, he stole money from you? Stole my money like he stole my kisses? Whammo! Tell her your sad story, Bubbles. Oh, very well, Sergeant. Maybe I can save this poor sister from taking a beating like I did. Well, it all started the night the fleet came into San Fran. The house was packed with sailors. And as I stepped out on the runway, there at my feet was this fancy den. Charming, debonair, fascinating slob. And he's wearing a diamond ring big as a pismo clam. Well, anyway, after I finish, I go to my dressing room, and lo and behold, there's this fancy Dan. Only this time, he's piercing himself off as president of the National Bank. Naturally, it was boing at first sight. Then before you could say Minsky, he left me with a broken heart and a piggy bank to match. Took every dime I had, saying he was going to invest it for me. He did, in a ticket to New York. This, this man is a devil. But are you sure he is the one who calls himself Vernon Albright? The Bunko Squad doesn't make mistakes, ma'am. You can call Mr. Honeywell and verify it. Go on, ma'am, call him. <laughs> Operator, get me Honeywell and Todd, the investment brokers. That's right, Mrs. Mendoza. Our Mr. Albright is out of town on business. Absolutely. I put him on the plane myself. Goodbye. Mrs. Mendoza, I assume you're willing to cooperate with the police? Seguro que si. And then I am taking the next plane back to my own country. Good. Uh, now, when Fancy Dan gets here, don't say a word to him and don't let him say anything. Just throw him out. Or better still, don't even let him in. I understand. Now, we have the hall staked out. We'll make the pinch. Well, I guess that's all, ma'am. Mil gracias, ladies. And especialmente to you, Senorita Bubbles. My gratitude for coming here to warn me. Ah, oh, it was nothing, sister. We peelers got to stick together, don't we? <laughs> Betty said you have a message for me, Mr. Honeywell. Have you decided to resign the presidency and exit gracefully? I guess I might as well at that. The message was from Mrs. Mendoza. She's at the Park Plaza Hotel waiting for you. Oh, really? Are you sure that you don't want to make your pitch first? No, I'm a man of my word, all right. You go ahead. And I wish you all kinds of luck. And I do mean all kinds. Well, I'll see you in an hour with that Mendoza contract. You don't have to move out of this office right away. You can take the weekend. Da 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 That's the whole story, Margie. I don't understand it. Three times I knocked on Mrs. Mendoza's door, and three times she yelled, Fancy Dan, and... 
and clobbered me. Then, then she's not a burlesque queen at all. She's a client. Oh, this is awful. Well, it's worse than that. Now I have to sign a contract for five more years as vice president. What do you mean? Well, that was my deal with Mr. Honeywell. If I brought in the Mendoza account, Mr. Honeywell was going to make me president of the firm. But if he signs her up, no dice and status quo. Oh, ho, so that's what Mr. Honeywell was up to. Huh? Up to what? Uh, never mind. Can't you go to Mrs. Mendoza and square things, Dad? Well, I checked at the desk and she's leaving for South America in a couple of hours. My only hope is that Honeywell doesn't find out and sign her before she leaves. At least I'll be in a position to dicker. Then start gathering your dickering material, Dad, because everything's going to work out all right. Uh, well, where are you going? I've got to see a woman about a sly old dog. <laughs> That old double crosser using you to trick your own father. Well, fortunately, Dad doesn't know we were in on it, Roberta, and I'm not going to be the one to fill him in, but I am going to fix Mr. Honeywell's wagon. Do you have any particularly fiendish ideas? Well, just one, and let's hope it works. I've got to keep Mr. Honeywell from contacting Mrs. Mendoza before she leaves, so you go in and keep Dad company while I go get another costume. <laughs> Yes, Betty? Mrs. Mendoza is here to see you, Mr. Honeywell. Ask the charming lady to come in, please. <laughs> ah, Signora Mendoza, bienvenido, su servidor. Si, si, I think. Come sit down. It's a pleasure to meet you at long last. I've heard so much about you. Me? I hear mucho plenty about you, too. I gathered from your phone call you had an unfortunate experience with some cook passing himself off as Vernon Albright. Shocking. <laughs> Why, Mr. Albright is my right hand. It is good thing your right hand does not know what your left hand is doing. Eh, hey, senor? I'm certainly glad I caught you at the airport, Mrs. Mendoza. This could have been a most unpleasant situation for everyone concerned. I must confess, I do not understand what has occurred today, senor. Well, this is a little personal matter between Mr. Honeywell and myself. That's why I wanted you to come here and confront him. He'll have to admit that I'm the real Vern Albright. Then you can sign this contract with me. Why don't you sign it now and read it at your leisure, senora? I'm anxious to see your little signature on that bottom line. My signature you are welcome to, amigo. You want me to make the X in Spanish or in English? Huh? <laughs> oh, you're a jolly one, senora. Just decorate that dotted line with your distinguished little hand. There you are, I think. Now, if you'll excuse me for a moment, I want to put this on Mr. Albright's desk so we'll see it the minute he comes in his office. Glad you're here. I got some nice bad news for you. Yeah. Hi there. I see you got your Mambo teacher here with you. Or tell her she's out of a job because there's the Mendoza contract signed, sealed, and delivered. Watch your playmate's face get purple, honey. What are you babbling about? This is Mrs. Mendoza right here. Don't be a bigger idiot than you are already. Do you think I don't know a burlesque doll when I see one? Let me catch your next show, honey. How is it? Who is this nasty old man? Knock it off, sister. I got the real Mrs. Mendoza right out there in my office. Who are you? Come on, speak up. Just a minute. Who are you? I am a dead pigeon, I think. Margie! Sergeant Susie of the Banco Squad. Sergeant nothing. That's Albright's daughter. His daughter? Then all of you try to play tricks on me. You're all crazy Americanos. Take your contract. I am going back to South America. Now see what you've done. Me? You're the one that told her I was out of town. It's all your fault. Now, just a moment, gentlemen. Let's call it a standoff. Anyone for president of Honeywell and Todd? Papa 
for me, oh. You may not be president of H&T yet, but you did come out with a profit. You're now a graduate student of the Mambo, and you can teach me. I don't want to even hear another Mambo as long as I live. Might as well accept it, Dad, because you know what the word Mambo means in English, don't you? No, what? Well, it's a bop Cuban word roughly equivalent to our crazy. And that's what our life is always going to be together. Real crazy. Well, <laughs> that's my little mambo. <laughs> Same time, same station, Scott Paper Company again will present My Little Margie, starring Gail Storm and Charles Farrell.